Hello again. I was going to play RimWorld today, but my brain is so tired. If only there was something else that could do the thinking for me. Don't worry, Hazor. I, GPT, can do the thinking for you. Oh, how convenient. So here's how this is going to work. I'll start a colony, but uh, wait, what kind of colony? Hey, GPT, can you suggest any fun concepts to build my colony around? Cannibalism, for example? While a cannibal colony could be an option, I can suggest some other fun concepts as well. Here are a few ideas. I'm, I'm just going to stop you there, GPT. I'm going to do the cannibal thing. Understood. If you're planning on making a cannibal colony, I suggest focusing on hunting for food and prioritizing the butchering of humans for their meat. See, GPT? Morals are a flexible concept. It's maybe a little worrying how quickly GPT flipped the morality switch off there, actually, but um, it's probably best not to think too deeply about the cold mechanical gears that are telling me to, uh, how did they put it again? Ah yes, prioritize the butchering of humans for their meat. In a video game, if you're listening, YouTube, in a video game. Alright, so we're a gang of three cannibals. Sotiro, Lax, and Jesse. We're settling here in some temperate forest, I figure it's best not to make this too challenging for our AI overlords lest they turn their frustration and ire my way if things go wrong. And this is where GPT gets to use me as a puppet. I'm going to take this into a new conversation and ask for step-by-step -step guidance for surviving the first five days of the playthrough. We're going to follow GPT's instructions as closely as possible day by day. I did leave the cannibal part out of this conversation, so we'll just have to read between the lines a bit sometimes. When GPT says, gather food, we know what it means. Okay, so first things first, assign tasks to colonists, prioritizing tasks that are essential to survival. Look for somewhere to settle down and build a basic shelter. That's all solid advice, I can do that. Here ought to do nicely, there's plenty of trees and good chunks of steel in the rock nearby. I'll just build it out of wood since that's what I have to hand, and I'm taking GPT saying that this shelter will give a place to sleep to mean that I can build beds there. Right, cool. What's on the list for day two? Start gathering food. Fair enough. In the absence of any humans to gather for food, we'll have to make do with some berries and a turkey. We'll also build a second room onto the base in which to start a fire. I'm going to go with a stove for that. Right, straight into day three in which GPT suggests we continue gathering food. All right, understood. Commence food gathering. Conveniently, this mixes well with another of GPT's instructions for the day, which is to start crafting. Human leather capes for everyone. Also, research. To be fair, I tend to find myself forgetting to start researching early in RimWorld, so getting it started by day three is actually pretty good going for me. So far, this is going very well. I could get used to this, just executing instructions provided by an AI. So what's next? Day 4, GPT is telling me to make the place a bit more comfortable, which I'm taking to mean build a table and some recreation. Also, apparently it's time for defences, which for now just means a wall. Last thing on the list is a farm. Not for food, obviously, just other useful bits like cotton and smoke leaf. Alright, day five. We're really chugging along here. Actually, it's getting pretty hard to keep up with GPT. Upgrade your turrets. I don't have any turrets. Add traps. Build a moat. What? Research medicine. Build a research area. Okay, alright. Jesus, just give me a minute. I've got to name the place, first of all. Not cannibal settlement. That'll surely encourage some folks to visit. Now, let's build some traps in the entrance here for when they do. Alright, we're doing okay. We're not necessarily keeping up, but we're not way behind either. Let's go and grovel at the feet of the machine for further guidance. For day 6, GPT is telling me to expand my food sources, improve my defences, and research new technologies. Once again, totally reasonable. The other day a buck self-tamed, so if we can just tame a lady deer then that's our food sources expanded. It'd be preferable to farm people, but in a pinch, deer will suffice. And whilst we might not be able to significantly improve our defences right now, they are about to be tested, because we have our first raid. Admittedly it's just a single waster with a club, but still, 
This is a pretty triumphant moment, if you ask me. Actually, come to think of it, maybe this is what GPT meant by expanding my food sources. Anyway, day seven. This is where things start to go a little bit off the rails. GPT suggests that I build a workshop, a hospital, and expand the power grid. All right, calm down, give me a minute. What we actually manage to get done is harvest some more of the local wildlife for food and set up a solar panel, which will let us refrigerate our food and light the place up. Once we research batteries, that is. Day eight. Train, train your colonists. Training sessions. Uh, build a research bench. Okay, way ahead of you there, and build a trade beacon. Way behind you on that one, actually. All we actually accomplished today is building that hospital that GPT asked us to build yesterday. We also made a few human leather capes, but you know, that's a given. Day nine then. Expand your storage areas. That's reasonable. I can make a cupboard for food and since we've researched batteries, I can cool it, preserving our food. Great. Improve your living quarters. That's not gonna happen, GPT. What else? Build a crematorium? Okay, one, that's a very pessimistic thing to do, to prepare in advance for the deaths of my colonists, and two, obviously if they die, I'm going to eat them. Day 10's instructions make me think that GPT might be trying to get rid of me. I'm being a bit of a pest by this point, but it's clear that it's effectively saying, go on, you've had the basics, here are your long-term goals, bugger off. It's important to remember that GPT isn't really strictly speaking an AI. It's not intelligent or creative, it's simply a language model, capable of scraping together information from various corners of the internet and framing it all in an easy to digest human sounding manner. I was actually initially quite surprised how well it managed to piece together what is effectively a pretty decent strategy guide for the initial days of a RimWorld colony. But after more thought, all we really got was pieces of blog posts and click farm listicles that I'm sure you'd find if you googled how to survive the first few days of RimWorld. If we're being honest with ourselves, the only reason we're here is because I let ChatGPT play RimWorld is a more unique and interesting concept than I played yet another cannibal RimWorld colony. So let's just rip off the mask and get on with things. Alright, where were we? We're 10 days into the colony and we've had a decent start so far. Our colonists are happy, well fed and sharply dressed. With all this time spent focusing on GPT, it feels like we've barely met them. They're all fairly general but still have some basic specialisms. Lax is our best cook and grower, Jesse covers crafting and social, and Sotero is a great miner and researcher. All of them are solid at shooting and nobody really has any glaring weaknesses. Anyway, we should probably research towards turrets and build a small kill box. We're only on Cassandra's drive to survive, so let's go ahead and flip this over to Randy on Blood and Dust. That should keep things spicy. For doing so, we're rewarded by a guinea pig self-taming, which is convenient as the guinea pig just happens to be the venerated animal of GPT. And in case I didn't mention their relationship before, Sotero and Jesse are now engaged. Relationships are very welcome here as they're generally a pretty grumpy colony overall. The colonists are clearly confused that their beloved GPT has left them, so they build a temple in its honor and use it to appoint Lax the moral guide role. She reacts in an entirely reasonable manner and goes on a sad wander. Very good. Hey you. Yeah you. Tom. Get subscribed. You can subscribe if you're not called Tom of course, I just really wanted to drive the point home to Tom. I know what you did Tom. I'm on your tail. Uh, sorry, where were we? Ah, right. Tomo fell out of the sky here, suffering from paralytic abasia. I accepted before realizing that they're a waster, which could be a problem, but we'll figure that out much later. A theme of this playthrough for some reason was self-taming wildlife. Next in the queue to join up was this mega sloth, which frankly I don't think I'm going to be able to feed. So we're just immediately slaughtering it for its meat to sustain us while we wait for more people to visit. And sure enough, here's some pork. It's only two, so I just let them run through the gauntlet of traps before carrying them off to the butcher's block. A wanderer named McDonald joined next, funnily enough. They must have heard that pork prices were cheap enough to run the McRib for a few months. They're already a member of the cult, but as a colonist, they're pretty mediocre. Still, extra hands are always welcome. And it took us considerably longer than GPT would have liked, but we're finally building some turrets. 
I know this is a pretty crap kill box by the way, but I just needed something tacked onto the front of the base for larger raids. It doesn't need to be amazing right now. Another thing I never mentioned about this colony whilst under the boot of the machine is that we brought a dog with us. Thumper. Thumper has the plague right now. Smelling the scent of death on the air, a small herd of manhunting alpha beavers arrive. A good test for the turrets. Turns out they're, uh, well, gotta love vanilla shooting in Rimworld, huh? Anyway, it wasn't clean, but the beavers are dead. What's next? Raiders. Just normal humans. Friends of some of those visitors we ate earlier, I guess. It's kind of unusual to be raided by just standard issue humans in biotech. Regardless, we shot them just the same as if they were any other xenotype. And one of the survivors, Lucia, looks just decent enough to be worth recruiting. We don't have any prison cells, so this unfinished bedroom will have to do for now. Oh yeah, we're making bedrooms here, because like I mentioned earlier, people are pretty grumbly around here. Especially Lax, thanks to the high expectations that come with her role. To help cheer her up, another guinea pig joins. Both of our pigs are male, so there won't be any pups on the way, but still. Their funny little squeals echo throughout the colony, much to everyone's delight. Less delightful is the distinct lack of human meat. We're having to hunt the local wildlife to keep the fridge stocked. It's quite difficult to actually keep a good stock of people parts in vanilla. I feel like once you start stacking mods with extra factions and events, this is considerably less of a challenge, but maybe I'm just getting unlucky here. Anyway, here's a wild woman to help alleviate the issue. She's not much, but every little helps. A ten-year-old named Makoto offers to join the colony next. I tend not to accept kids into my colonies, but having some child labour around here would actually be pretty handy, so I let them in. Annoyingly, their certainty loss factor is 50%, so converting will take some time, but whatever. They don't have to enjoy being here, they just have to clean the floors. And the floors will actually need plenty of cleaning too, since it's finally time for Jesse and Sotaro's marriage. I'm not sure what I'm suggesting will be all over the floor, but, you know, all kinds of things happen at marriages, or so I'm told. We're 30 days into our lovely colony, and 20 days clear of GPT. The stain of its rule still smeared on the floors and walls, evidence of a worse time, a time where creativity was shelved in favour of blindly following orders. Yeah, I'm just referring back to it to keep the video's content vaguely linked to the title if I'm honest. Anyway, we've built a drug lab, but we have no food, so that's not enormously relevant. It's never going to be enormously relevant for us anyway, as the ideologian forbids drug use. More important though than gathering food is converting that kid, Makoto, to our cannibal cult. The ritual went swimmingly and now he's a cannibal. See Makoto? Morals are a flexible concept. Now I assume this is just Randy being random, but I got a waste pack infestation here despite obviously not having any waste packs. Seems like an odd one, but I just disallowed anyone from going within the general vicinity of it and hoped for the best. Weird. Shortly afterwards, some big meaty Neanderthals showed up. Perfect. A little bit of shooting later and it's off to the butcher block. Thanks to child slavery, by day 35 everyone in the colony is pretty happy. The place is clean and we're building some more individual bedrooms for the folks that are still stuck in the original barracks. Lucia's resistance finally breaks and she joins up after having been converted to the cult earlier in her prison sentence. Is it still a prison sentence if there's no judicial system? Never mind, she's a great miner and a decent researcher. Sadly a pessimist, but I can deal with that. Perhaps she could go mine this silver meteorite that's just touched down. Honestly though, we don't get many traders around here, so I'm not sure what I'd be hoarding silver for. Can't think why they don't come here. Hmm. And now finally, I've realised what some of you probably yelled at the screen a while ago. We can't keep Toma. As a waster, without Psychite, she'll eventually die, and our ideologian forbids it. So that was a lot of wasted food, keeping her alive. Well, might as well try and get something useful from her before she's butchered and cooked. Her unfortunate demise at the hands of an unskilled heart extraction technician is followed by a small group of maddened muffalo, who've come to try and deliver some meat to the colony which is rather kind. Less kind is this warg hunting McDonald for food. It's loving it, I guess. Da 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 da. Anyway, this marks 40 days here. We're preparing to build a geothermal generator and making more bedrooms. 
only to be extraordinarily rudely interrupted by those mechanoid twats setting up an EMI dynamo nearby. One of the few nearby sites that demands an immediate response, so I sent Jesse off on her lonesome to go and deal with this. You could if you wanted send a well-armed kill team to go and handle the mechanoid sites like this, but in 90% of cases there's no need, as the building containing the thing is only guarded on one side by dormant mechs. So Jesse quite admirably does the thing and slinks away to the map edge to trundle home at her leisure. Whilst she's busy with that, an Imperial Hussar named Agnes crash landed right next to our home. I don't really want to make an enemy of the Imperium, and even if I did, we couldn't recruit a Hussar for the same reason that we couldn't keep Tomo. They need drugs to live. Moving on, that geothermal generator is finally done. And since this means we'll no longer be reliant on the battery backups, I added a switch between them and the main grid. I don't know for sure, but I assume that this means when a short happens they won't discharge all of their juice in a fiery manner all over my very wooden base. Speaking of fiery discharge, a boomalope self-tamed. And with no real reason to keep it, I just sent somebody out to end its suffering, since I assume life as a boomalope is pretty much just constant suffering. They leak petrol from their teats, I mean come on. I know it would be lucrative, but I just can't imagine living with it. Uh, moving on. We've researched microelectronics. Only about 30 days late by GPT's schedule, but whatever. We don't care what the robot thinks anymore. We can make advanced research benches and comms consoles. We're in the communication age, baby! But we still need more man flesh. And there is this ancient danger here. They usually contain man flesh. So let's go give it a peep. Ah, balls. I tend to forget how nasty these mechanoid things can be now. Okay, well, this might hurt, but I'm sure we can muddle through it. Uh, right? Ah. Uh. Oh dear. Damn it, GPT! Why didn't you warn me? GPT? Wait! No! Please! Ah! 